It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. And we're back at it for another weekly edition of A Cup of Coffee with Will and Chris right here at Slumberland at the Lake. Chris, captaining the shootout this weekend? Oh, yeah, all of it. It was greatness, man. I tell you what, that... Uh, I talked with uh, Captain Ron and Leah Martin yesterday. That was, that was a great shootout. That was epic in every way, man. You had everything. Yeah. It was wonderful. We'll tell you all about it. Some new course records, probably a record amount of money. We'll, we'll look ahead to that. Also, I'm going to be joined by Corey Lewerke yeah. with the Camdenton Lake Regional Memorial or Lake Regional Airport in Camdenton for this year's air show. Mm. I'm telling you what, they've got some really cool things coming. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that. So he talks with us, tells us all about that, plus our hometown hero. And boy, hard to believe we are fully entrenched in football, whether it's yeah. high school football, whether it's Mizzou college football, or the NFL and fantasy football in our weekly picks. Boy, it's about to get exciting, and yep. it's my time to dethrone the reigning champion of the Pick'em League, which I would tell you who it was, but you all know mm -hmm. if you've ever watched the That's show. That's me. I'm the defending this guy, champion right here. That uh -huh. and a whole lot more <laughs> on this week's Cup of Coffee after this from our man Daryl. Hey everybody, Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. We're getting ready for the last big weekend here at the Lake, Labor Day weekend. And to match it, we have a Labor Day sale going on. Huge savings across the store. We have stuff ready to go. We have delivery teams ready to deliver to the whole lake area. So come see us at Slumberland Furniture where we're bringing happy home. All right, and I got to give a shout out to uh, the crew here at Slumberland because we just had pretty big order and they delivered it Saturday. They were on time. And of course, Arvin, I don't know if you guys know Arvin. He is the warehouse lead. The guy's been here for uh, 10 years now. And every single time, on time, kind, they set it up, they clean up after themselves. And uh, Arvin's smarter than me because he knows if Will's there, we're going to get talking and I'm never going to get work done. Man. So he's like, well, I'd love to stay and talk, but I got other deliveries. That's a 10 hour and job. Man. That is a 10 hour <laughs> job. But seriously, <laughs> the crew here at Slumberland takes care of us here at Lake TV like you wouldn't believe. And they'll do the same thing for you. So stop in and see them. All right. So Lake of the Ozarks shootout in the books. The big question coming into the weekend was, will American Ethanol hit their eighth consecutive top gun yep. at Lake of the Ozarks? Will they beat the course record of 204 miles per hour? That answer was yes. Big On Saturday, yes. they ran an impressive 199 miles per hour, but they knew they had more. And on Sunday, uh, they ended up running a course record 207 miles per hour. Now, when I say course record, three quarter of a mile course. Yep. Um, and so in their 51 foot Mystic Catamaran, they went 207. And it was, even watching on TV, I wasn't even at, on property at that point in time or couldn't see it. I mean, it was exhilarating watching. Yeah, it was. It's amazing how they've got that uh, that boat put together. And they were even happy with that 207 mile. I mean, you would think you'd be happy with, you know, 199, but they weren't because right. they knew they they were shooting for 207. They hit 207 and they were happy with that. And remember, this is a three quarter mile course. They used to run it a longer so they'd get up higher speeds. Yeah. I mean, even faster because they were running longer. So to get up that fast in that short of a lead in and a three quarter mile course is amazing. They're flying. Yeah, no doubt. Huge shout out to uh, Don. Don Onkin, owner of the boat, John Kosker. He actually owns Mystic Power Boats, mm. uh, and he throttles, and then Tony Badiato drives. These guys are unbelievable. They're eighth consecutive, and they are the classiest, kindest people in racing. You know, they're family-oriented, and uh, everyone says, you know, the Lake of the Ozark shootout has kind of turned into the American ethanol event. And if you don't like that, for those of you out there that think you can run with these boys, uh, beat them. buckle up, baby. Yeah. The 35th annual Lake of the Ozarks shootout is waiting for you, and so are the Onkins, so is Tony, so is John. Uh, a little friendly competition, because the last couple years you've had a few people saying, we're coming for you. A lot of times those individuals don't end up running because they have issues leading into it, but not American at all. Again, eighth consecutive wow. Top Gun Award, 207 miles an hour, as you see right there, just impressive. Uh, of course... In 2001, their top speed last year was 193, yeah. down considerably from their 2020 speed of 
202. Reason being, they had some mechanical issues uh, last year. Still got 193, but there is a new course record, which is pretty exciting. Another world record. Now, it's not going to go in Guinness because they didn't have the judicator and all the nonsense and hoops to jump through. Yep. But Vision Marine's electric boat charges faster to record-crushing 109 miles per hour. This is an electric boat now. Does that even seem possible? Uh, not really. I mean, that's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, 104 on their Saturday run, I believe. Got up to 109 on the Sunday run. That's pretty stunning. Yeah, it's unbelievable. They have a 32-foot cat. Now, the world record was 104, uh, and that was smashed Sunday by 5 miles per hour. Back in 21, Vision Marine ran an all-electric Bruce 22-foot boat, and that went 49 miles per hour, which was super impressive, and at the time was the record. Um, and so 109 miles per yeah. hour, just crazy. Uh, the official world record, since their 109 will not qualify for Guinness, is a Jagu Jaguar V20 e-boat, and that was set in Cumbria, England, Cumbria, yeah, England, in 2018 at 88.6 miles per hour, meaning 20 mi 20 point four miles higher than the actual world record. And these guys are just getting started. They're innovators. They're already figuring out how next year they can up that. They're already throwing out uh, figures of like 120, 125, and I'm like, get out of wow, here! Wow, that's you amazing. Know, super yeah. in that Guinness stuff impressive. with the adjudicators and all that stuff. That's just kind of. Stupid now, you know, I, and, and this is cool. Right. This is the unofficial world record. Uh, another record, factory billet, real popular. Their 51-foot outer limits, their V-bottom record, uh, they hit on Sunday of 166 miles per hour. Wow. To see a V-bottom going that fast. Wow. Absolutely crazy, and that's Jim Schultz and Mike Focher uh, teaming to pilot that. But 143 runs on Saturday, 85 runs on Sunday for a total of 228 boats run down the course. Yeah. It's a record for the shootout. Another shootout fan favorite, Hall of Famer, Carrie Six Killer. She broke her long running record in her 24 foot Baja V bottom. She had run 69 like four different times, four different years. That was her top speed. Saturday ran 69. So I'm going to give it a go Sunday, 73 miles wow. per hour for the Hall of Famer. So congratulations wow. to Ron and Carrie. Um, and then another record, and this one's really exciting because the PWC element of the shootout starting to gain some momentum and popularity. And we've heard the, the speed of 100 thrown out there. I'm like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, the longtime course record that's been held for the last eight years was 95 miles per hour. Well, James Myers beat that at 99 miles per hour. Him and his dad, Mike, are local. And their story on Mike's Facebook page says, we got a new record. Our first ski broke down. I told James, go get our backup. And in his first run, he ran a smooth 99, beating the eight-year running shootout record of 90 five miles per hour. How cool is that for father, son, Mike and James Myers? Great guys. Very, very uh, good dudes. And so it's cool to see them break the record. They're can always you, so excited. At can you shootout. imagine jumping on uh, PWC and going a hundred miles an hour? That just doesn't seem real. No, I mean, that's flying. Imagine your, <laughs> your face and your skin just <laughs> blowing <laughs> something fierce. Yeah, no kidding. That's I mean, because that's moving. Well, just think if you come off that thing, man, yeah. you know, it's not going to feel good. So just a record-setting weekend. And, of course, it wouldn't have been uh, a weekend on the water. If you didn't have a little of uh, interesting things happen, you yeah. know, everyone probably heard about, you know, the boat driver who fell over the side of the boat. You can see it right here. Uh, and the boat just run out of control. I know, it was so crazy. I mean, fall out of a boat like that, and and then he was okay. He bops right up, and he's fine. They pick him up out of the water. And then, yeah, because he didn't have the kill switch on or whatever was going on there, the boat kept going out of control. And, man, the fire rescue guys yes. were just brilliant in the way they handled that. Finally got it shut down. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was injured. No, you know, I mean, it could have been a very bad thing, but it turned out so that, uh, you know, it turned out nobody was hurt. And the fire rescue got to show everybody why they're so incredibly important. 100 percent. And it's almost, you know, 
perfect timing, as ironic as that is, because without the Lake of the Ozarks shootout, a lot of these fire departments wouldn't have the equipment, they wouldn't have the training, they wouldn't have the facilities. They wouldn't to, have any of that. Right. Yeah. And so um, it ends up that the shootout funds an organization, a group that saved a lot of people and acted swiftly. I can't say enough. I mean, because if you had seen that situation unfolding and thought, what is the absolute best way this can this can end. Well, yeah. that is exactly how it is. That was it. Yeah. And I mean, if, when you think about it, you know, how do you shut down a boat that's out of control? I mean, I wouldn't have known, but they had done this before. They had trained for this, practice for this and did it right in front of uh, the whole world. Our great Andy Evans had it all on camera and everything. It was fantastic. Uh, but I told my wife after I saw that, I said, I'm never going to forget to put on my kill switch again because you can see what can happen there. You Speaking know? of uh, Andy, really the, the whole Lake TV crew, Andy's uh, videos this weekend mm -hmm. that he was uh, either shot or edited just by himself viewed almost two and a half million times. Wow. Um, wow. So, and Lake TV's crew as a whole, just unbelievable, starting with the really uh, liaison to the shootout, uh, Ricky Smith, our production manager, chief engineer, uh, didn't hear enough good things about him. It's nonstop. You know, you couldn't have stopped hearing how amazing he was, how he saved the day. Uh, from Andrew, the most talented videographer and editor, probably not just Missouri, but in the entire Midwest. And then you have Megan Albers and you have uh, David Leatherberry. Those four just crushed it. And of course, our drone guy, Daniel Carnahan, at every single mini event, money shots, no one can turn out the type of magic he does from the air. Yeah. And so uh, I can't say enough about our crew. They were phenomenal. And as far as to kind of wrap up the thought of the uh, boat that was out of control, yeah. been a lot of speculation and things said. I do know that there's a, an investigation underway and that's really all we can say or all we know at this point that's in time. That's really all we know. So yeah. there's no reason to speculate because we really just don't know. And I know that the shootout will do what's right and, and yeah. figure out how to move forward and continue to uh, make safety the number one priority of the event. Well, and it is a uh, prerequisite for all those drivers to have that kill switch on so things like that don't happen. Why it didn't work, that's what's under investigation. So Correct. Well, they'll figure that out. But I'm... Uh, for people like me, it's like, I'm going to make sure I'm wearing that now because there's right. a lot of times I didn't wear that. Right. You know, so. and, and you ne just never know on the Lake of the Ozarks or any body of water yeah. when you're driving a vessel. So after the shootout, you look at what's next. The events are done. No, we got so much coming on, including the incredible. air show, which is going to be incredible. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We come back. We got Corey Lewerke from the airport in Camden to talk a little bit about this year's air show. Welcome to season number 10 of Great High School Football on Lake TV. COMC brings you great games between local rivals Friday nights this fall with pregame starting at 6.30 and kickoff at 7. September 2nd, it'll be Warsaw and Versailles. September 9th, Eldon home against the Tigers. On the 16th, Osage entertains Eldon. September 23rd, California home to Osage. And we'll close out September with Camdenton home against Bolivar. October 7th Versailles entertains California. October 14th, Camdenton and Lebanon renew their heated rivalry. The last week of the regular season, it's Osage home to Versailles, and then come the playoffs. The COMC High School Football Game of the Week starting with the pregame show at 6.30 and kickoff at 7. Each game will have an encore showing the following Tuesday at 7.30. Here comes the 10th season of high school football on Lake TV. And as promised, we're now joined by Corey Lorke with the Camdenton Memorial Lake Regional Airport. And Corey, a good friend of mine, good friend of a lot of your guys is here in the Lake of the Ozarks community. And of course, you're with the airport out there in Camdenton. And we're here to talk about the air show. It's back. I know everyone's excited. So uh, what can people expect at this year's Lake of the Ozarks air show, Corey? We are excited about it. There's, It's turned into a more than a one day event almost. We're starting Thursday. We got the traveling Vietnam Memorial Wall coming. And for those of you, 2020 we had it. It's gonna be the same thing. It's actually gonna start in Osage Beach. We're gonna parade it down and it'll be set up and opened up for the public at an opening ceremony at 6.30 on Thursday evening. That is September 8th. That's awesome. And then on September 9th, the wall will be there available for viewing all day long. 
We're also going to have our B-25 will be in town, giving some of our veterans rides, hopefully Vietnam and World War II. So if you want to come out and see the B-25 and just thank our veterans, it's a, it's a great day for that. So. And it's really the theme this year, correct, is Operation Welcome Home, and it's a salute to the Vietnam veterans, and we're celebrating 45 years since the war ended. Now, for someone who's seen that wall, Talk a little bit about that experience because until you see it, you don't really get the full impact. So what can people expect if they've not seen that? You know, for me, just seeing it the first time last year and I, I didn't know what to expect and it, it, it kind of took your breath away. You're sitting there looking and the airport, I, I thought was a great setting. I mean, not only you got the wall, the veterans, you got the warbirds usually in the background and it's just, I mean, it brought a lot of people to tears to be honest yeah. and a lot of people and there are, will be, Either our junior ROTC or some veterans organizations will be there to assist finding names and you know And I've even talked to a few people. I said why don't you come out and see the wall? I know they're Vietnam vets and they're like, I don't know if I can it'd yeah. be too emotional I mean, We hope you can but I mean it's it's an emotional thing for some and for others those it just makes for me who obviously was Not in Vietnam and not in the service. It just makes you think wow I, What these people did yeah. for my freedom so we can come to an air show like this and express you know, it's just so yeah, that I encourage everyone to come out and see the wall and the wall will be there Saturday during the day of the air show. It'll be a little more commotion that day because we got a lot going on Saturday. I mean, the day starts with a veterans breakfast. Um, we'll have an opening ceremony to the air show at 1030. And then, I mean, to be honest, it's going to get loud. There's a lot. Well, I'm going to have a lot of airplanes flying. Um, we got a jet fire truck coming this year. Um, wow, that'd be awesome. We're excited about that aftershock. And we got, you know, for those of you who don't know, the Camdenton Airport went through a huge expansion this last year. We now got 5,000 feet of runway. The last air show was on 4,000. Let me tell you, that makes a big difference, especially for what this jet truck's gonna be able to do, that extra 1,000 feet, so. Um, it'll so be, you're saying this, this is probably the most exciting, entertaining air show we've ever had? I'm. I'm going to go with yes. That's awesome. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's probably going to be one of the best shows we've ever had. Now you're going to see a lot of the same acts because what we've had since 2011, since we had the show, because quite frankly, they're the best. And yeah. I mean, you just got to see Brian Carell at the shootout. Do you know I mean, and like I was telling you before, if you liked him at the shootout, you'll love him at the air show because we got to design an air box. These performers are required to stay in that air box. I mean, that they're highly regulated, obviously air shows with the FAA and his box is very narrow at the shootout because of the racetrack and the way it's designed. So we give him a little more room and a little more leadway out at the air show and you can see a lot more of Brian Carell and you'll get to see him perform with another airplane. He's Him and Darnell Racing, who's bringing this jet truck, are all already talking smack on social media because you know, he's gonna be, instead of racing a boat, he's gonna be racing a jet truck. And I believe, um, you know, we got Hewlett Chevrolet, one of our main sponsors, he, he thinks he has a Camaro or something that can run against Brian Carell, so we'll... Oh boy. <laughs> and listen, if you have not seen Brian Carell with Brian Carell air shows, uh, here's a little clip from this week's shootout. I was telling you, Corey, he does this maneuver. He goes straight up and then he turns his engines off and he just free falls. Just it's unbelievable. I told you, it kind of makes me nervous, but I would go to the air show just to see Brian Carell and it's going to be packed with entertainment and the cool thing is this is kind of a family event and it doesn't cost a lot as far as it's free for the family the only thing you might pay for is parking and then of course vendor food and, and souvenirs but very affordable and something the whole family can enjoy yeah that is true it's ten dollars to park and that's just saturday and clarified day of the show saturday only it'd be ten dollars to park there will be free parking at the middle school i believe this year and they will shuttle you there and you know i don't know the time on all the shuttles but yeah so if you have that is a free option it is a lot more convenient to park there and it is ten dollars per car load you know we don't bring a bus you know it's ten right. <laughs> ten dollars so and then there's no admission fee and then we'll have food and drinks sold by our vendors there that'll help support the air show so no it's for the most part free i mean there is a fee for food and breakfast and it's awesome so. And then opening ceremony at 10.30, and then, of course, buckle up because at 11, that's when all the madness starts. It's going to be crazy. You're going to want to be there with your kiddos. And the last show, uh, we'll get over about 3.30 on Saturday. But, hey, if you haven't got an opportunity, you still can see that wall on Sunday. And you guys have a run on Sunday as well, correct? Yeah, after the air show, come out and um, run for the fall at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, run a mile for a veteran. Last year, a lot of people did two or three. It's, it's great to... I mean, I did it. That was an emotional Wait, thing. Wait, you but, did it? 
I mean, now yeah. I feel like I got to get out there and do it. I, I'm not a runner anymore. I <laughs> struggle. I like to run. So you do the run and you run in honor of a fallen yeah. veteran. You can walk, you can crawl, you can do whatever you want. You know, you just have a mile. Why'd you look at me when you said crawl? Like, why did <laughs> you, you knew I would probably be crawling. But I have some people want to ride a four wheeler, whatever. We got a mile of level ground and it's that's level. Awesome. So no hills. So that's you, you, right there's up an advantage my there. Alley. And that's like you said, that's an emotional experience yes. because you think about what these individuals went through and you've got their bib number and their photo and you're running in their honor and you're like, man, this is easy running this mile in comparison to the sacrifice they ultimately gave. And so really it's a weekend to honor our country, honor our veterans and be greatly entertained. Is there anything else we need to mention? I know you guys have a, a few of your bigger sponsors you guys want to mention. And then anything else that we should know as we get ready to attend this year's air show? I mean, like I say, you're going to see a lot of neat warbirds. We're looking at a potentially a P-51, maybe two. I've heard a rumor there might be two. T-6 coming, Lee Crouch and Bob Richards coming. But yeah, one thing I got to be clear on this air show would not happen without sponsors. It would not be free. I mean, you could pay $50 a head if we didn't have these sponsors. So got to thank all the big sponsors. You guys here at Lake TV, um, the city of Camdenton has been behind this event. If they weren't behind it, it wouldn't happen. Uh, Lake of the Ozarks Convention, Visitors Bureau, Camdenton Chamber, any one of those organizations didn't support this event, I can tell you it would not happen. Right. So got to thank those. Um, some of our big sponsors, Central Bank, Hayes Construction, Hedges Scott Funeral Home, Williams Law Firm, and I mentioned Hewlett. Not only are they a sponsor, um, we're hoping they can give us a run. Be we crazy. Give the planes a run for their money. So, you know, again, without our sponsors, the show would not be free and probably would not happen. And there's a whole lot more. I can't mention them all, but go to our website, Lake of the, Air show, Lake of the Ozarks Air show com and thank those sponsors. Do business with those sponsors because a lot of them support a lot of community events, not just this. And we wouldn't have these events if we yeah, didn't step to the, up to the plate. And you guys have some great support, like you mentioned. And what I love is your guys' website is great. It's super user-friendly, easy to look through. You can find schedule. You can find out how to get involved, where you need to be when, and all of the details. Um, and of course, Corey, big shout out to you and what you guys have done over the last couple of years at the airport out there. Because for us here in Camdenton, mm -hmm. Missouri, to have that type of airport that's growing with the new hangar and the new thousand foot of runway. It's pretty cool and it's only going to mean great things for Lake of the Ozarks. So thank you for all you do, my friend. Well, thank you for all you guys do. Just like I was saying earlier, it's, it's I love working with locals, having a local TV and, and it, they really care about the lake area. And you're right, the airport has grown thanks to local support. I mean, I see it every day. My numbers are changing a lot from last that's year. Awesome. Well deserved. Well, Corey, Lewerke you with the on. Camdenton Memorial, or sorry, the Camdenton Memorial Lake Regional Airport out in Camdenton, of course. That's where the air shows happen. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back with more cup of coffee at Slumberland at the Lake right after this. Get ready for the Lake of the Ozarks Air Show on Saturday, September 10th. It's sure to be a fun-filled day with flying, education, and honoring veterans for their service. Breakfast begins at 7.30 and parking with shuttle is available all day long. Don't miss the flying, entertainment, food, vendors, and activity all day at this year's Lake of the Ozarks Air Show. Then check out the Vietnam Wall starting Thursday through Sunday. Visit lakeoftheozarksairshow.com for more info. And we want to thank all our sponsors for making this year's event possible. All right, I got to say, mm. uh, I didn't want to put Corey on the spot. I yeah. wanted to give him a shout out, though, because we go to church together. Yeah. I thought this was super cool. Kind of made me think about when I get to do this with Brindley. But a few weeks ago, Corey uh, was baptized in a service, and then right afterwards, he baptized his son. Wow. And that was super cool. That and is And moving cool. and powerful. And it made mm. me think as dad, like, I can't wait to share that with Brinley. I bet you're tearing you know? up already, oh, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get me <laughs> going too much. But, yeah, super cool. And it just kind of shows the kind of guy that Corey Lorkey is and the way he loves his community and, and where that base comes from. So yep. thanks for Corey for coming on. And, of course, you guys saw not only that interview and some of that video, but that promo. It's going to be off the, the charts. I'm so excited for that event. So make sure you guys come out to the air show. All right. So every single week we have a weekly hometown heroes presented by our friends at Central Ozarks Medical Center. And uh, last week we honored Sheree Keeley. She's awesome with yep. the CADV. And uh, I thought it was fitting after the shootout that we ought to give some uh, credit and praise to the ones who make the event happen, and that is the shootout volunteers. Uh, normally we have hundreds and hundreds of volunteers, 
And the way the shootout works, because I get asked this question a lot, and I think mm -hmm. it's important to kind of fill people in, is like, where's the money go? How is it figured? You know, I hear fire departments and there's some charities involved. Well, for all the mini events and all of the work and the planning that goes in, organizations provide volunteers that work hours and log those hours to go towards their organization fund at the end of shootout. Now, if your organization uh, is not a nonprofit and you volunteer, then you get to pick. Let's say you, me, and six of the crew decided we're going to volunteer at these events and log our hours. All of our hours are going to go towards Wonderland Camp, mm -hmm. for instance, as our designated charity. Well, so at the end of all of that, there's a formula. They take the hours and they formulate and they cut those checks. Fire departments, you know, all of the different local charities. So it's actually pretty cool the way it works out where the, the organizations that provide the most volunteer hours are going to get the biggest cut. And when you look at this year, a record setting 800 plus volunteers, wow. Wow. Chris, can you believe that? That is unreal. And I mean, that is, you know, the old saying is it takes a village mm -hmm. and uh, for the shootout, it takes about 10 villages, you know, yeah. all those volunteers coming in. I mean, as great as Captain Ron is and as great as Leah Martin, the shootout director is, uh, they could not do it right. all without all of these volunteers, 800 of them. That's just amazing. And they're all out there, not getting paid, right. working in the sun. Uh, just fantastic. They deserve this honor. And some of these gigs, too, I'm talking about with you're, you're running parking like Jack Stockwell and Dr. Tim Bartlett. Mm -hmm. Some of those are like 10, 12, 14 hour days in yeah. the sun, directing people, trying to tell you, no, 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 we know this guy. We're friends with Captain yeah. Ron. We need to get down there. And it's like, and they're doing that on behalf of their organization yep. to, to raise more funds. And I mean, there's a long list. I'm going to leave people out, but I'm going to just list a few of the ones. Uh, Hall of Famers, Margie and Ron Frazier. Yep. They are the face of volunteering. They're in the Hall of Fame for their volunteering. There's no event you don't see them at. Uh, unbelievable people, truly salt of the earth. You have the Morris family with Kent, Trisha, Jane, and Adam on the course. Lots of, of donations they do, lots of uh, hours in the Hall of Fame as well. This year's Hall of Fame inductees, Tony and Michael Wagner and Sandy LaFoon yep. with the radar guns standing up there in the sun both days, all day long, never leaving their post. Just unbelievable. New to the shootout, Jen and Josh Collins. They're in charge of merchandise, helping Ron and, and Margie, and they took it to a whole new level. They're going to add some organization, and, and they wasted no time making an impact. I mentioned Jack Stockwell and Dr. Tim Bartlett with the parking. Unreal what these guys do. Of course, you guys know Hall of Famers Jeff Dorhauer, Diana Dorhauer, Carrie Willoughby uh, with registration. They do a phenomenal job. Of course, Ricky Smith with us and the yep. entire board of directors for the shootout. The mini shootout, Lance Hedrick and Roger Lees. Uh, a few of many, many incredible people and volunteers who make this event the greatest event in my opinion in the entire country every year and in 2021 because of these volunteers four hundred forty five thousand dollars was distributed back to these charities these fire departments a lot of these organizations don't have their doors open today without this annual event yep and this year we're looking at six hundred thousand plus I'm trying to just trying to give a tease because we have no idea. Yeah. But all indications are it's going to be record setting. So super excited. Shootout volunteers. You make this event what it is. And everyone here at Lake TV, everyone in the community tips our cap to you. We applaud you. And we say you guys went above and beyond this year. And you are this week's hometown heroes presented by Central Ozarks Medical Center. We start tearing up talking about them. You know. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh it's amazing. The, this community is amazing when it comes to stuff like that. All of the charity events led by a shootout couldn't happen without the volunteers and the business leaders who want to make things happen to give back to the community. That's true. It's true. And you can actually hear Uncle Chris caught up with, like you said, Leah Martin and Ron Dugan. Mm -hmm. To kind of recap this year's shootout, fresh early Monday morning. They hadn't even slept yet for yeah. Sunday night's Still tired. wrap up. <laughs> So you get to hear that on this week's Community Spotlight Show. Um, and then you can also catch the Doc Series, episode number six this yeah. Sunday night. We only got a couple weeks left in that. But That's real quick, we'll run through some football. So Mizzou opens their season Thursday night. By the yep. time you see this, it might be over. A couple things I'm looking for in this game. Brady Cook, 
uh, he's going to get the start at quarterback. Luther Burden makes his much anticipated college debut. And then who leads the way at running back for uh, Missouri? Uh-huh. That's going to be it's going to be a big hole. Hopefully, it's going to be a platoon. I'm looking for Cody Schrader, my buddy who transferred from Truman State. Mm. D- D2 was a walk-on at Truman State, and now he's going to be probably the starting tailback for Mizzou. High school football, Camdenton big win, Osage big big loss. You can hear from both coaches, Coach yep. Jolly and Coach Shore with Uncle Chris on this week's Coaches Show. And then, of course, Eldon, big win, 47-20 over Fulton. California loses to Savannah, and Versailles loses to Knob Noster. This Friday, we kick off our live high school football season. Warsaw at Versailles should be a good one. And just to wrap things up, the NFL season kicks off next week. So next week's show, we're going to get our picks, picks yep. kicked off. So, Andrew, start thinking about who you're going to pick. And uh, Bike Fest in a few weeks away, we'll tell you more about that next week. Uh, and on behalf of Jill Ray and the entire crew here at Slumberland Furniture, Uncle Chris, Wild Will, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.